Hi there, how do you do my friends? Let's go together through the darkest of times of Germany, of historical Germany. This is a nice little indie game, so it's not that detailed, but it's very interesting. It's about tactics, it's about squad management, if you go through that. It's about survival a lot. Uh, it's about the story of the history of, of Germany in these darkest of times. And uh, we're going to go for a new game here. I've tried it a bit, but not too much, so it will also be very fresh for me. Um, we're going to go there, two modes. First is story mode, second is resistance mode. And uh, of course, we're going to go resistance mode. It's it's the hardcore story mode, if you want to say so. You need to watch every step so we can die. Police and Gestapo are in a high alert. The members of your group are always on the edge of leaving. No safe games no going back here we go this is the character generation you might see this is a, a little bit of a throwback i mean you can just um alter the the appearance of the people but they will get served to you so it, this has a feel of um old Baldur's gate games <laughs> where you clicked all the time to get the best stats like that's that's it for me and i'm aiming for for someone uh special that is probably one of the most balanced and interesting personalities of these times um and that is i mean there's probably two two things that that can be or two um political directions that are most balanced at these times that is the one is the conservative and the, the second one is the social democrats so the conservative is uh the german tradition of the german prussian tradition of conservatism which is caring for the poor the poor don't have much to say but they still should be treated fairly especially connected to the catholic spectrum and i, th I think that's quite interesting uh, to look into that because that seems to be uh, something that is not so like up in the media so it's something fresh even if it is conservative um, it is something that today you don't hear that much about catholic then connected with conservatism was like that kind of caring conservatism uh, that doesn't have a platform today it's like uh it's not like the pope because it's it's german so germans didn't didn't have much love for the pope so much in the in the later <laughs> stages or when even germany was founded i mean it, it was pretty much an influence but it was not i mean it was clear for a conservative that the state comes first and the state is caring for the people and the state is also in contact with the capitalists the important capitalists and with the nobles and with everyone like that was the conservative spectrum like to to have everyone in there it, it was um like embracing everyone and leaving no one behind and that's what we want to do here leave no one behind let's see um we have an attorney as catholic conservative maybe let's go for someone else a teacher mm, seamstress i mean i'm i'm a little bit you know i i can really not play women well i have to say so a, a, <laughs> a typist that would have been nice a catholic conservative teacher why not could could worth Codworth. He has he has a nice schnauzer, as you call that kind of beard. Here here has the monocle, <laughs> special of these times. And I like I really like the hat here. That's that's something really nice. So let's confirm that and see what other members we get. We get some other members, and we'll have a full group um, when we have recruited two other members. So let's see. We're twenty five, so we're pretty young in these times that are so unsettling for still most of the germans it is certain that today every honest german is ashamed of their government let's let's start chapter one the seizure of power stop the regime and it's going to take a while because it like it hasn't been uh, optimized for anything 
On January 30th, 1943, President Paul of Hindenburg appointed Hitler to be Chancellor of Germany. That same night still, three friends meet in the back room of a Berlin pub and commit to resist what is about to come. Everywhere in Germany, ordinary people, friends and families made the same commitment, risking their lives to help others and fight an inhuman regime. This is their story. And you instantly start with a morale. That's what I love about this game. You, you instantly, like there, there is the the three uh, newspapers you get there: the Volkszeitung, the Tageblatt, the Rundschau. Like the Volkszeitung is the the uh, newspaper for the people, basically. Tageblatt is the day, daily daily mail, if you want so. And the Rundschau is like the like circling everything. Um, so. Let's read through that because we want to be into the history of the game as well as that's pretty important for our actions and for the spirit of the game. 1st February uh, uh, 1933, Hitler's Chancellor. President Paul von Hindenburg appoints Adolf Hitler Chancellor of Germany. Hitler was elected then with about 30 to 33 percent of the vote um, and he came to power with the help of the other conservative parties and Paul von Hindenburg. NSDAP celebrates liberals and left are devastated. Hitler swears oath to uphold German laws and constitution and to serve all German citizens. Well, about that all, that was pretty much a lie, but you know that now. Uh, Centrum talks with Hitler. The conservative Centrum party, which later formed the Christian Democratic Union, or rests of that that learned better has a number of questions on how the new chancellor plans to continue certain policies by the election results a new right-wing conservative government led by hitler should see a number of central ministers so far hitler hasn't answered you see back then hitler wasn't like that that evil man um even the britons thought he wasn't so bad and uh yeah, everyone wanted to, just to talk to him but it it already started here the the sa tens of thousands organized stormtrooper brown shirts marched through the brandenburger tour after hitler's appointment the paramilitary group was clearly prepared and awaited this moment and this is our group first february 1933 when i enter our secret meeting place i hear emilia meyer say they made him chancellor hitler this this is a disaster how could president hindenburg appoint him uh, well, Hindenburg was very old then, and most people said he was maybe past his prime a little bit. So, um, I don't think it's it's worth talking uh, about what happened. It's just about what we should do now. Let's, let's look forward into the future. We have Ilse Herzberg and Emilia Meyer. So, two women, and we'll probably recruit some men. We'll see about... It's, it's all about, they also have stats, it's not only about story time, right? So what should we do now? It's really bad. The question is, what do we want to do about it, I say? We must do something that makes an impact, something big to wake the people up. And we need to do it now, says Ilse Herzberg. We're not there yet, argues Amelia Meyer. We need to convince more people to support our cause before we draw any attention to ourselves. They're just waiting for a reason to have people like us arrested. Don't you think so too, Amelia asks me. And we're, we're a kind of conservative. We're probably careful. Uh, con Catholic conservative. Empath empathetic, maybe, and, and careful. And so we're... I think you're, you're right. We need more supporters first. See, says Amelia, while we wait, the Nazis persecute and kill people. They get stronger every day that they aren't stopped. Ilse takes a sip of a drink. Yeah, and Ilse Herzberg from the name is probably connected to, to Jewish origin, so she would be alarmed. She has every right to be. Um, yeah, I hear you, but we need to be careful. Yeah, we need to take this step by step, strategically, like a conservative would do it. Not that much emotionally, right? You're right, but we can't help anyone if we're dead or in prison, can we? 
So what is the most important task right now, Ilse asks. Um, and the most important task is probably getting more support, at least that's what we want. Because if you have people behind you, that's also the conservative opinion there, then that will help you convince other people, right? Finding the truth and spreading the word is what we want to do. We know that the Nazis are criminals, but we can't prove it yet. We need to document and spread the truth, I say. Well, that's our checkpoint. We can read the news again. We've already done that. That's something you can do from here. There's the radio. That is us. Amelia Meyer, Ilse Hertzberg. And that is the main thing, where we plan the missions. So, let's see. We have morale. We have 60 morale. So if morale goes too low, bad things will happen. People will leave the group. We have supporters. Supporters will give you opportunities and will give you money. Uh, we have 20 supporters, which results in five uh, German marks per turn. And what we should do is find a new member, because we're only three and we can have five members. So the required skill here is secrecy. That's the first symbol. And empathy. Risk is very low. We have required members one to three. We'll see how many. Um, I mean, it's probably good. We can, in theory, do all the three missions now. But later on, we'll have many more missions and we'll have to choose. Find a new member. We need to find candidates we can trust. We're willing to join our group, but we don't give away that we are recruiting for the resistance. So this is what, what's helpful, this is what's required. Careful, empathy. Mm, let us see, Court of Worth has no empathy, <laughs> or very low empathy, but good secrecy. Ilse Hertzberg has the best combination, probably. She's an anarchist, though, so <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we're a Catholic conservative, we're not directly the, the fan of the anarchist, maybe... We understand the monarchist much better. She's also a teacher, so so we could be like like friends or on the same side. And she's a little bit the odd one out, but probably we know her from some kind of cultural event. She's an I idealist, so she will she will do this. She will do this. That's say you well. Preparation is basically the success chance, and the danger is well. It's obvious. Sometimes we'll have to flee. Sometimes we'll have to do some things we have valuable information about the nazis that will help us it will also increase the danger we're gonna have the bicycle that will decrease the danger mm. and we can also look for maybe we could we could send her along to make sure that uh, there's some kind of control right um yeah that's in that's not enough we we definitely need someone else there so here we go these two the two women women are made for this in in this game sometimes right so let's see whom they recruit we have no supporting skills here inspiring and leader so if we would have us here but we're not inspiring and leader we're nah. <laughs> let's see yeah, I mean that would be that would be fully, but we need to risk something, or we're gonna be left behind. So let's confirm that. Then we can collect donations, but we we have enough money at the start, so uh, let's try to talk to workers. Maybe Hitler is Satan. What? Um, even though we're not a worker, so we'll see. Uh, Otto Leopold is a worker and support of the group. Wants to introduce us to some of his co-workers. It would be good if we had some worker or idealist there. So Ilse Hertzberg would be nice there. Harmful, though, is teacher. So mm, we're probably not going to do it here. We'll rather collect the donations in Kreuzberg. So. It's going to be dangerous a bit. Even more if we... If we go for the intel but someone has to do it we need to do something right here um and that's gonna be good we're kind of okay with that we're not the best for that really we don't have the best character but 
We'll have to live with us. Literacy will come into play later and uh, secrecy is pretty good. So maybe it will be... Ah, uh, yeah, we're harmful here as well. <laughs> oh, well. Um, let's try, let's try. It's probably not that dangerous. Let's end the planning and go for it. God has a plan and will lead us to the light. Supporters donated two marks. Five people are still supporting us. Ooh, that's not much. Let's see. Court Worth visits the group's known supporters. Court Worth, that's us. Among workers in Kreuzberg to ask for additional donations. He's successful. People are upset about the latest atrocities of the regime and are willing to help the group. Hmm? And now, whom will we get? Amelia Meyer talks to dedicated supporters to find out if they would be willing to join the group. She finds three who she thinks might be able to become core members of the group. Now it's on us to decide which one should join the group. <clears throat> and it's in this mode, it's very important to have people that think alike. So, look at that. <laughs> well, that's what we wanted, right? We have everyone Catholic conservative, like our leader. So let's see who is who is best suited for that. We have a furrier. Oh, we don't have we don't have a worker yet, I think. And who's Catholic conservative was kind of okay empathy and okay propaganda and okay strength, not much literacy, but so secretive. Wow. Mm. That's he's probably the safe bet. Then we have a nurse. Now a nurse is of course always helpful. It was pretty strong and empathic, but has no like no propaganda. Also low literacy, and we have a waiter who is not at all secretive. Hmm, the question is, I, I think we're going to go for Gerhard Hagelstein. Let's go. Because he's so secretive, and that's helpful. It's already dark as I ride home on my bike. The streets are empty, and an ice-cold wind sneaks its way through my scarf. I burrow my face deeper into my scarf. I reach an empty Alexanderplatz. In the distance, I can see a group of men ganging up on someone, shouting at him. And we're compassionate. We'll, we'll head for the group. Who is that man? There are three men, all wearing the brown shirts and swastika armbands. They're surrounding a civilian. Um, we'll get off the bike and move closer. We have to, we have to save this man. Dirty Jew yells the loudest one. He steps forward and pushes the man so hard that he falls to the ground. I will approach carefully. He loses his hat and I see that he's wearing a kippa beneath it. That's it, Rudolf. Show him. Cheers, another one. Now we have to interfere. We have to save this man, whoever he is. A Catholic. I mean, we cannot, we cannot stand by. Remember the Samaritan will interfere. Hey, I shout. What's going on here? Leave him alone. The group slowly moves toward me, forgetting the old man for a moment. What do you want? demands Rudolf. Mind your own business. Piss off. I calm them down. Come on, guys. No reason to get so upset. Shouldn't you be celebrating? Why all this violence? When I talk to the group, the old man quietly gets up and moves away from this. I think we'll continue talking. You won, didn't you? Your four will lead Germany back to its former greatness. What else do you want? The guy they called Rudolf steps closer, both hands at his belt. I can smell his bad breath. You, the thug says, you better bug off right now. You'll seriously regret it. It's a new day. You people can't oppress us any longer. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just agree with him. It's better to agree in these situations. We'll not convince him from of anything, right? Let's agree with him. Shouldn't you be happy just that he has taken over? I say while we're talking, I see the old man moving further and further away. Rudolf, says the third thug, has remained silent so far. I think the old man is gone. We'll run to our bike because um, they'll probably get angry. Take the advantage of the opportunity and jump on my bike. Stop, shouts Rudolf. Stop, you'll pay for this. Um, We'll not insult anyone. We're a Catholic. We're a conservative. We have pride. Let's, we'll, we'll just laugh at them. 
just to laugh and pedal as fast as I can. I only slow down when I can't hear their angry voices anymore. Ah, I'll never get used to things like this. That was Berlin Alexanderplatz. So, pretty good week, right? <laughs> Morale declines. <laughs> Supporters, no decline for now. What are the news? It's the 8th of February, so it's one week later. Parliament dissolved already. At Hitler's wish, Hindenburg dissolves Parliament. Well, members of the House lose their seats. The Chancellor forms a preliminary interim government before new elections. And the Tageblatt says emergency decrees. So-called emergency decrees massively limit freedom of assembly and speech. Hitler's newly expanded powers can be used to shut down protests and squash any critical press. And he speaks with the generals too, discussing the need to rebuild the army and expand to the east. In the middle of our meeting, Ilse Herzberg addresses the group. Everyone, there's a public protest against the Nazis coming up. Well, this is a good chance. Now we have to show our face. And we're not afraid to be a Catholic and a conservative. We're doing the right things at the right time. This is a good chance. Ilse continues, we can spread the word. We can recruit others. People willing to protest are exactly the people we need. You're right. Okay, let's do this, I say. And this is our mission now. It's the big one. Join the public protest. It's pretty dangerous, but it's the big thing. And so we're going to have to do it. Our supporter Gustl Ring lets us know that the Social Democratic Party is going to hold a huge public protest against Hitler and the Nazis in the Tiergarten. That's a park in Berlin. So... Who is going to be there? Required skills are propaganda and empathy. So let's see. We have Emilia Meyer, who's basically made for that. And then. Well. <laughs> we have propaganda three, that's okay, but um, let's see. We have six here combined. So that's pretty good. And Gerhard Hagelstein, he's an altruist. He's probably better at um, recruiting someone, right? So we'll we'll go ourselves here. And as we are three, we'll add the bicycle, so we have not that much danger. Will that help us? No. The intel will just increase the danger, so... These three will join the public protest. And we can try to find a new member. We need to find candidates we can trust who are willing to join our group, but don't give away that we are recruiting for the resistance. So we have Gerhard Hagelstein here, who would be pretty good at that, I think. Um, I mean, look at that. It's it's all about his secrecy, right? <laughs> Maybe give him a little bit more marks. Now that doesn't make a difference. Maybe some more intel. Mm. Preparation is better, but the danger also goes up. I'm not convinced by this. Um, we would have to offset it. So, uh, but we need a member now. So let's let's use the intel. It's just there. It, you, he will have to do it. He's good at secrecy. He can be careful. Hagelstein will do it. So, wish us luck. And there's things we cannot do, like collect, collect a donation now, talk to workers. And the planning. Wish us luck. I'm spending the afternoon with a friendly couple, the Elbangers, who have invited me over for coffee and cake. Hubert and Annegret are also members of the church I attend. Unfortunately, the conversation turns to politics. Yeah, that's always, always the best way to... <laughs> Talking about politics, always the best way to start shouting at each other. <laughs> After all, says Hubert, while I know that our church isn't too happy about it, I don't really think there's anything wrong with him. Uh, 
Yeah, we're gonna be careful. How so? Show says so much. It's got some controversial views regarding the church. Uh, wanted to, Hitler wanted to abolish the church and replace it with the German myths in the end. Uh, but I think he's taking care of a problem that is much worse than the Nazis. And um, yeah, what would that be? The, problem. the communist says Annegret, who walks in with a pot of coffee and takes a seat. The communists are the real threat, don't you think? Would you like some coffee court? Oh, but uh, the communists are not in power, and they were not even close to power then. But it wasn't the communists who took over the Reichstag, ever terrorizing everyone who disagrees with them. It's the Nazis, I say. Praise the Lord, it wasn't the communists, says Hubert, but... Stalin and his compatriots, well, that's true. Stalin is really a, a, a great but a dangerous man too <laughs> are just waiting to take over Germany and that was I think probably not at all true look at what they did to the Christians over there yeah they didn't have it that light but mm, besides this Annegret who are these people who disagree with Hitler almost all of them are communists well that was certainly not true um, I mean, there were the Social Democrats, a lot of the Catholic spectrum disagreed, even though the Pope didn't really raise his hand that much. Mm. But the parties, in the parties it was all about power a bit, and uh, about the, the connections, and that connection led to the rise to power, right? So we'll let this sink in. More coffee, she asks. Um, but what about the violence? That's something that really offends us as a Catholic. They are brutal. They attack people in the streets. They torture and murder their opponents. This is wrong. You must agree with me here, I say. Surely you agree? A whip is for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the back of fools, says Annegret, and smiles. Hubert nods. People who disobey and attack their new leader can't expect anything less. Well, I don't know what to say. We're guided by God and not by some, some worldly... How do you like the cake? Annegret asks. Um, uh, the cake is fine. Let's just... This leads to nothing. End the conversation. What is it? Says Annegret. You look pale. Are you alright? We'll leave. I'm fine, I say. I just realized how late it is. I need to get home. Annegret stops me on my way out and says, Wait, you can't leave like this. What is it? Here, she says, take some cake with you. It's way too much for you, and me. It was so great to see you. We'll see you in church on Sunday. Thank you and goodbye. Are these eyes. <laughs> I mean, I kind of like and dislike the art style. It, it makes me cringe a bit in, in sometimes a good and sometimes in a bad way. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, I say, and take the cake. Yes, see you in church on Sunday. Let's pray for better times. End of that scene. Let's see what we get. We have five people supporting us. Our supporters donated two marks. German marks. Hmm? Let's see, let's see. Ah, Gerhard Hagelstein talks to dedicated supporters to find out if they would be willing to join our group. He finds three youth who he thinks might be able to become core members of the group. Now it's on us to decide which one should join our group. We have three Christian liberals. <laughs> well, they are Christians, so that's that's okay for us. Um, let's see. We have Hagelstein, who is a furrier, so he's a worker. We have two teachers. We have a pharmacist. Um, hmm. Already so many teachers. Maybe we'd rather go for another worker, right? So we have this man who is good at secrecy. We have this man who is very balanced. He's an electrician. Mm, not that literate, but that's not... He has the best name too. He, he's called Götz Irre. Götz like Götz von Berlichinger, who, who, who cursed like... That man at Irre is like... Cold. <laughs> that means crazy in German. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we're gonna recruit God's era. He also got the hair for it, definitely. Um, let's see how we how we can do it. I mean, we would probably also like more more propaganda, right? But these are all not that great. We have propaganda here, but not much much empathy. That could be a problem. So let's let's confirm God's era. Here we go. We join the two hundred thousand protesters. We're at the uh, at the in the Berlin Lustgarten Park to protest. The speaker asks the crowd for discipline and unity in resisting the regime. Do not worry, there are too many of us. Hitler and his henchmen can't stop us, he says. We talk to other protesters and some are willing to support us in the future. We've got 11 supporters. And that's pr a pretty good result. We have pretty good Pretty a lot morale gain. That was a great success. What is now coming? New right-wing coalition. The right-wing parties DNVP and Stahlhelm established a come front Schwarz-Weiß Road. That's the German, the old German flag. They will participate in the March elections and build a coalition with the Nazis. Tageblatt says Kolwitz steps down. Heinrich Mann and Kette Kolwitz step down from their positions within the Prussian Academy of Arts under pressure from the Nazis. And Hitler speaks at Sportpalast. He opens uh, the election campaign with a speech. The Berlin Sportspalast, which is, of course, yeah, something most leaders would do, even today, right? Like, they're going... In Germany, they're going to the football games uh, very often in... I don't know, in, in America, probably to American football and so on. That's always. Sports makes everyone look good. So here we go. So we have full five members. And let's plan our new missions. We have no event, which is usually a good thing. <laughs> got a lot of morale. And we've got really a couple of supporters. And that's nice. Uh, let's, let's see what we can do here at the moment we cannot do that much we have unknown missions here yet but two missions we can do at the moment we can talk to workers and collect donations talking to workers so get more people is probably more important for now um i will probably send our workers in <coughs> which means hagelstein Then we have Götz Irre. And maybe Ilse Hertzberg. I'm not sure. Let's see, we have 6 to 7 gains. And with her, we would have 9 to 11. And they'll get the bicycle too. Yeah, that's good. Let's confirm that. And then we'll go for collecting donations. Who's going to be in the lead here? Probably her, right? She's she's good at that. Yeah, it's it's harmful, but it's not more dangerous. And caught. Get a lot of money. The danger is there. We'll use the bicycle, of course. Collect donations in Kreuzberg. So, kind of a quiet thing. Let's end the planning and go for action. We lost one support us, but we have still have 15 people supporting us. And our supporters donated four marks to our group. That's more than last time. Let's see how the result here is. Gerhard Hagelstein meets with co-workers of our supporter in Kreuzberg and talks to them to see if some would be willing to help us. It turns out there are still people not happy about the regime and willing to do something about it. We get 10 supporters. Pretty good result. And uh, Have you heard that? That's the dice. No, that's probably the, the money. Emilia Meyer visits the group, the group's known supporters among workers in Kreuzberg to ask for additional donations. She's successful. People are upset about the latest atrocities of the regime and are willing to help the group with 19 money. That's 90 marks. That's pretty good. So it was a successful week, but our morale did decline a lot. So let's see what happens now. Industry leaders support Hitler. Yeah, in, in these times, 
industry often made it uh, their case to support uh, rather authoritarian regimes because if you only have one to talk to, you only have one to like bribe, you have only have one to convince. And that's very practical for, for lobbyists in these times, so they're flocking to him. At a meeting with representatives of the German industry, including Krupp, Quant, Flick and Opel, Hitler announces he'll abolish democracy but protect private property. Participants donate large sums to, it, to the NSDAP. They were afraid to because it was called National Socialism, right? But actually it wasn't socialism, as you can see here. Private property and the big industry grades were protected. The SA and SS formed the new police force. Reichsmarschall Göring appoints 50,000 SA and SS members as special constables and urges them to enforce the law with prejudice. So the private army now becomes a state army. Oskar Maria Graf leaves Germany. The famous writer Oskar Maria Graf goes on a lecture tour to Austria and decides he won't return to Germany. 22nd of February 1933. Gerhard Hagelstein tells me that he despises Ilse Herzberg. She's a anarchist. Her views don't do the group any good. We would be much better off without her. And yeah, I mean, she's always unsettled us a bit. She was the odd one out. She has been pretty successful, but we'll ask her to leave the group. Um, that could lead to problems, but she will not... I mean, she's an anarchist. She won't tell anyone uh, of the Nazis where we are. We can be pretty sure of that. But we must we must find a common spirit and she's not in that common spirit we're all pretty these these guys are all pretty much um of the same of the same flock they're christian they're conservative they're even monarchist we'll ask her to leave the group she should find another group where, where she has actual people to of, of of her views she can be much more effective then and and do the things she likes I could probably paint things to walls. That's something we don't really want to do, but maybe we should, but we'll look into that. We have other things. We have the friends and, and things like that. We ask her to leave the group. I speak with Ilse and ask her to leave the group. Gerard Hagenstein seems pleased with my decision. So he likes that. She leaves and we'll have to recruit someone else. Here, we would like to find a new member. And Hagelstein, who is so happy about that, should find us a new member. Do we need to give him a bike? Not really. He'll do that. We, we, we trust him. We trust him. Mm, let's see what we can do. We could contact a priest. That's something we would... Of course do, we're a Catholic conservative. Let's see. Get Adler, a devout Christian and member of the church in Templehof, tells us about a pastor who previously often expresses strong criticism of the regime. Let's see, we need empathy. Uh, helpful is, yeah, con conservative Christian, of course, Catholic conservative. meet him and find out if he'd be willing to support us um, maybe I mean maybe Götz Irre would be good at that uh, he's calm too does that help not really um, he has a little bit more empathy than than court worth yeah <laughs> That's not something so good. How about Götz? Oh, Götz is the man. Götz is the man. Look at that. Yeah, he doesn't even need a bicycle. He'll do that. Let's find out if he'd be willing to support us. We're contacting a priest with Götz Irre, the Christian liberal. Let's see. We can collect donations. We can buy paint. So... Um, can paint walls and things like that but maybe i mean we're more into buying paper that's that's more our thing um, the thing of the leader and the thing of amelia meyer let's see we need empathy and literacy for that 
That would be Emilia's thing. We can talk to workers. Yeah. She wouldn't be good at that. Mm. Collecting donations, maybe. She would be good at that. Let's see about buying paper. And Court, who is... Who is just so unempathic. <laughs> Being helpful would be a negotiator. Right. She would do it much better. What are we even good at as a leader, right? Uh, that's the question. Let's see. We need to find something where we're good at. Painter Anna Baumgarten tells us about shops where we might buy larger quantities of paint. Court. Well, not that great. Probably um, we'll do the following. We'll buy paper. We'll have Maya lead the charge and Court supporting her. And then we'll have great gains of paper. So here we go. May God protect us. <laughs> here we go. 24 people we have supporting us. We lost one. We have gained seven marks to our group. And now. Amelia Meyer wants to buy paper. To avoid being tracked, she picks a shop in Kreuzberg, where no one knows her. The clerk takes the order and disappears in the back, while Amelia Meyer waits at the counter. After some time, the clerk returns with a paper. Amelia thinks, though, she has been seen. And that's another mechanic mm -hmm. that increases the probability of us getting detected. We have Götz Irre here. He meets with a priest in Tempelhof to see if he could be one for the resistance. Things go well. The priest is an opponent of the regime and tells us that many, many members of this community might be willing to help us. Hmm? Gerd Hagelstein talks to dedicated supporters to find out if they would be willing to join our group. He finds three who he thinks might be able to become core members of the group. Now it's on us to decide which one should join our group. Let's see. Oh, we have a, we have another Catholic conservative, a nurse. Oh, that's <coughs> from the from the looks of it, that's good. I mean, an anarchist would f would not fit in. A monarchist would maybe fit in, and she's she could do like anything. That's bad for propaganda. Mm, it's not so good, but it could be okay because there's empathy there. And being a nurse, white collar. A Catholic conservative. Ah, another monarchist. That's maybe too much. Look, she has these two things. Yes, she's got the heat. Authorities know about this member. Anarchist is good at propaganda, but not empathic at all. Anna is good at ah, these things, but not that secretive. She's like more balanced, I feel. Hmm. No, let, let's take a nurse. Let's take something. When in doubt, he always wants another Catholic conservative, right? So let's confirm Karin Leopold. It's late, and I'm having a drink at a bar at Hackischer Markt. The man storms through the door yelling. The Reichstag is burning. The communists have burned down the Reichstag. Let's run outside. I leave my drink and run outside as fast as I can. Despite the late hour, the streets are full of people. A red glow illuminates the night sky above the Reichstag. Well, this is terrible. As a conservative, we we think this is terrible that a symbol of our state burns. What are we still in, doing there? Says a woman in a fur coat. Let's go there and find out what happened. People around her agree and group a group forms. Yeah, we're pretty curious so let's join the group i joined the group and together we walk down the empty streets all the way to the reichstag the closer we get the more intense the smell of smoke and fire gets soon it becomes hard to breathe pull the scarf over the nose that's something we always do right that's our thing we reach the bridge that leads to the reichstag we are stopped by a police patrol area closed says the officer leave um
Now there's that thing about being a Catholic conservative. Um, we see that. But there's an officer who tells us to go home. We've now seen for ourselves what has happened. Should we ask some people? We're pretty inclined to, to obey the state authorities. Because that officer is clearly not part of the of the Nazi regime. Like he's not he has not got any any symbols out there, so it's probably safer to go home. It's late and I decide to go home. <coughs> it's very late when I finally arrive at home. I fall asleep right away and dream of fire and the strange people contradicting each other about who started it. Um, I wonder what will come of this. We cannot really imagine. We have a pretty big, uh, pretty positive view of people. So we might be, we might be shocked. So we got a supporter, we, we lost a supporter, and we yeah, our morale declines weekly, so we have to fight against death too. Reichstag set ablaze. One or more unknown arsonists burn down the Reichstag. Nazis announce countermeasures and declare the incident a terrorist attack carried out by communists who plan to overthrow the elected government. And to this day it's it's not clear who started the, the burning at the first of March. Following the alleged communist plot to burn the Reichstag, it just says civil rights must be curtailed in order to fight terrorism and defend Germany's safety. Most people agree here, most historians agree that probably the Nazis set the thing ablaze, but you can you can never say. What what is true is in any case, whoever did it it <laughs> it was the Nazis who used it for their agenda. And of course, there was someone arrested on this day, a man named von Lubbe from the Netherlands, who claimed to have done it. And uh, uh, the, the chief of the police thought he, he did it uh, because he told them he did it. He, he was crazy and acting alone. And of course, the Nazis didn't believe it. They, they thought it was a conspiracy, and pretty, pretty much a lot of people also thought the Nazis set it ablaze. So, and the thing is, to this day, the historians do not know who really did it, if Van Lubbe did it, or anything. So, it's not clear. What is clear that the Nazis used this event uh, to expand their power. Reichstag Fire Decree. New decree suspends most citizen rights provided by the Constitution and allows the SA to arrest political adversaries mostly from the Communist Party. 1st of March 1933. I have something to say, says Gotts at our meeting. But I'm not sure if it's good news or bad news. Oh, what is it? I have a new job, he continues. The job has me serving in the house of a Nazi officer. Amelia Meyer gasps. <gasps> You're going to serve one of those pigs. Ah, uh, they're still people. We have to convince them. Otherwise, that's what the Catholic conservative says. I mean, the thought sickens me. But perhaps we can use this. But we, we want to know more first. Tell me more about it, Götz. It turns my stomach to imagine you working for a Nazi. What do you mean? You don't know if this is good or bad, I say? Hear me out, responds Gertz. What if we can play this to our advantage? What if I could get information for the group? Now that's a good point. You should keep it. And maybe we can get some friends in the government there. And convince them otherwise. That's a good point. You should keep it. That's exactly what I'll do, says Gertz. I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity to help our cause. I mean, it's a part of the state, right? And so we don't see it as that critical, probably. It's conservative. Let's see what we can do here. So there's some of these quests that are like some expanded quests, if you want so. And these need some preparation. Like, as you can see, they need some things. 
Now we have fulfilled some... Ah, oh, I can see this is the dangerous area now. It's patrolled by officers. Mm, the risk though here is pretty low, but not very low anymore. Let's see, we can for meet a former unionist here. We could do something here. Talk to the Christian community. That, that's something we'll, of course, do. That's observe the activities that would cost us a lot so we'll need money for that we'll need money and we can go for an as a uniform and well, that's nice we'll definitely talk to the christian community and then we need some money so here we could meet a former unionist yeah that's also good Volker Lose is a priest in Prenzlauer Berg and introduces us to some of his friends. We can try to convince them to support us. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's see what we can do here. If Götz, who is a calm Christian liberal, would help with this. But he's still a little bit suspicious. Well, that would lead to a big danger. Look at that. How dangerous that would be. Hmm. Yeah, of course, Hagelstein. The pro, the pro. He would be good for that. I'm not that much in danger. Mm, someone could help. Karin Leopold, maybe. Well, she's reckless. Look at that. <laughs> Got some empathy and propaganda. Let's, let's switch her out. Hmm. I'm really not sure. I mean, we don't need much secrecy here. We could give her a bicycle. Would that improve? Uh, it would improve it a bit. I think we should send two people there. Mm. Maybe, maybe Götz can help. Right. And we have full support here, not that much danger. Talk to the Christian community. So Emilia Maya has two of these points. Mm. Can send her into hiding. But we have missing marks. We cannot do it. So we have to get some money. Let's see. What's on in Köpenick? Meet, we can meet a former unionist there. As Maya tells us about a former trade unionist who used to be a strong opponent of the Nazis. How dangerous would that be? It would be quite dangerous and harmful also for her. So that's not good. Mm. We need for that, we need empathy and secrecy. So Gerhard Hagelstein would be the man for that. It's harmful that he's a con conservative, but still, I think we'll meet him. It's it's a good, good way to, to spend our time. We can produce leaflets manually. Hmm, risk would be high. Printer Martin Maria S has stole a printing roll from her workplace and donated it to us. We can now create leaflets manually. I'm really good at this, yeah. Let's do that. We'll need the bicycle. Let's spend some marks. No, that doesn't make a difference. Have more steps. Yeah, we can could go for more stacks of paper. Would she help? Oh, good. That would be crazy dangerous. We'll do it alone with our bike. Creating leaflets by hand is slow, but still a good way to spread our message. We could get three to four leaflets. And Emilia Meyer, can she do anything? Collecting donations. It's risky, but it's still okay. We have to risk it because we need the money. It doesn't get better. Here we go. Wish us luck. Just one supporter, seven marks gained. 24 people are supporting us. Currently, Leopold meets with people from the Christian community in Templov and talks with them about their dream and possible ways to resist it. 
Quite a few think that Hitler's way is against God and that, as a Christian, they should do something about the situation. Others have doubts because Hitler might still be God's will. Karin thinks she has been seen. Amelia Meyer visits the group's known supporters. Oh my God, we have to hide. Stay calm and move on. The police show up. She had to abort the mission. She thinks she has been seen. Producing the leaflets. Uh, we'll hide. Stay calm and move on. I had to abort the mission before achieving anything. Ah. Uh, Hagelstein meets. A preaching for the converted. The trade unionist is a staunch opponent of the Nazis and will support us. So we gain more supporters, but we've lost a lot of morale. Pretty bad round. <laughs> the NSDAP wins the parliamentary election, but Germany was already controlled by the NSDAP then, so they got 43% of the votes. The DNV, uh, Nazi DNVP coalition enjoys a slim majority, just enough to conduct the ordinary business of government. The state election in Prussia taking place on the same day produces a similar result as a communist crackdown. As and police search apartments and meeting places of communists throughout the city, confiscating publications and arresting hundreds, among them some members of the Reichstag. No school on Wednesday. To commemorate the historic election victory, the Ministry of Education decided that all schools and universities will remain closed this Wednesday. 8th of March, 1933. Götz Iris speaks with me before our meeting. A few years ago, I would never have thought that I'd be a spy. My God, remember when we spoke about me taking the new job, working for a Nazi officer? How could I forget? Götz's voice ticks up. It looks like it might pay off. I'm onto something. It's dangerous. But if it works, we'll be able to, to hit them where it hurts. Ah, well, keep it up, Götz. You're good, pretty good at this. Great, I say. Stay on it. a checkpoint and uh, I would say for now it was a pretty long starting episode thank you for watching and happy gaming to you we'll see each other in the next episode where we'll plan our new missions and see if we can somehow get rid of all the danger